Hey everyone, it's David at Restoring Hope Church. Thank you so much for joining us. It's our mission to restore hope and make a positive difference in your life today. You are about to listen to Pastor Aaron Crabb's message, Take It Up. Remember to click subscribe so you can be the first to know when we release new content. John chapter number five. John chapter number five. In verse one. How many believe there's a rain in this house to bring refreshment to you? I believe there's a rain in this place to empower you for what God has called you to do. There is a rain being released that's bringing restoration to your house. Amen. That was for you, whoever said hallelujah. There's a rain that is about to bring a harvest. I'm going to say it again until you get excited about sows. There's a rain that's about to bring some harvest. Is there anybody that's got a shout for souls? Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have it, say amen. Amen. After this, somebody say after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Somebody turn your neighbor and tell them to go up. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in Hebrew, the pool of Bethesda, having five porches. Some might say five. In these lay a great multitude of different people. I'm, that's, I'm paraphrasing, putting some stuff in there. A multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for a movement of the water. When's the last time you waited for him to move? For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the waters. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the waters was made well of whatever disease he had. Did you just hear that? Whatever disease you have, you can be made well. That's what the Word of God says today. And now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for a long time, 38 years. How many knows that's a long time to have an infirmity? And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in this condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? I want you to look at your neighbor, look him right in the eye and say, do you want to be fixed? Now turn to the other side and say you can be fixed. You can be made well. And the sick man answered him, Sir, this is like us. Sir, I I have no one to put me into the pool when the water are moving, when the waters are all stirred up. Nobody can put me in. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Somebody else got it. It was mine, but somebody else got it. And I'm bitter. Right? Somebody else got a miracle and you walked out because you was waiting for... I'm getting ahead of myself. Glory. But Jesus, aren't you thankful that Jesus will look past our response? He looks past the response and he says, Rise. Take up your bed and walk. My God, that's shouting material all by itself. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, take it up. Come on, tell them again. I need somebody to slap somebody, high five, encourage them. Come on, begin to stir up the, the anointing and say, take it up, take it up, take it up. Somebody shout suddenly. Immediately the man was made well took up his bed and began to walk. Now, I want you to look at somebody and encourage them to take it up right now. Glory! And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Take it up, take it up, take it up. I'm taking things up today. I'm taking things up, all the distractions. I'm taking up, I'm taking up the things that's been getting in the way of destiny. I'm taking this stuff stuff up. Say, where are you taking it up to? I'm taking it up with God. I'm taking it up to God. If you'll read in the five porches, I want to just go there just for a minute. That The five porches, the number of five is significant there. The number of five means 
lots of different things, but it also uh, it, it, it can represent the fivefold ministry that is in operation in this house. And it can also represent the number of grace. Five represents the number of grace. How many knows that every time you raise your hand that the enemy sees what grace looks like? Come on, somebody, because the one, two, three, four, five, you got five fingers on your hands. And so every time you lift your hands toward heaven, the demon trembles and the devil gets shaky in his boots because he knows about grace that is sustaining somebody right now. And every time you walk and you look down, you can't see them because they're covered up, but there's five toes. Hallelujah. How many knows that because of what he has done, you can walk in grace. And because of his grace, new mercies are for you every morning and so every time you lift your hands in worship every time you walk into the sanctuary you are reminding the enemy of the grace I'm talking about amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I was lost in my mess I was lost and undone without God or as somebody reached down his hand and he picked me up and he had a future and a plan and a destiny and a purpose and even though I was unworthy of everything thing that he give, gave me and has given me, I can walk in here with five fingers lifted high on both hands and walk in here with five toes and five senses to smell his presence, to hear his voice, come on somebody, to touch the tangible demonstrations of the Holy Ghost and every time those operations start to happen, it's an indication to the enemy, there's five that represents the grace I don't know about you but blessed is not my condition blessed is my position and I'm positioned in number five I'm positioned in his grace if you're positioned in his grace somebody say hallelujah Hallelujah. I'm positioned in grace and five porches represent his grace they were laying there multitudes of people sick And the law was telling them, no. Five is a physical, is a, is a, God meant you to walk in this, this five, this grace, because you are bearers of light. You are the bearers of grace and truth. And, and, and Moses' law was defeated when Jesus stepped on the scene and he came, that's when truth in life stepped on the scene. The law was broken because grace released. Are you hearing me? You're not bound anymore by the laws of man, but you're free by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some might say, I'm freed by grace. And right here in the presence of the bondage of the law was the testimony of the grace of God in Christ Jesus and his grace is amazing. In other words, when the law said no to you, don't pick up that mat, right? It's the Sabbath day. Don't pick up the mat. Don't you make your bed. Don't take up your bed. Don't poke the fire because it's the Sabbath day. It's the day you should be resting on this day. But what happens when your rest walks up to you? Come on, somebody. Somebody's trying to tell you what you should do on the day you should do it, but when the Sabbath walks up to you and tells you to get up and take up, then you do what the voice of God tells you to do. I need somebody to understand what your Sabbath truly is. Come on, somebody. He said, "He said I will carry you. I will give you rest. Cast your cares upon me, and I am your Sabbath. I will give you rest. I will give you healing. I will deliver you. I I will make a way for you. Somebody say, you're my Sabbath. And so we're living in some awesome times. It's interesting what God is doing. There's some waters being stirred. I believe that there's some things shifting and moving, not only in this house, but our house, our homes. Things are moving, shifting. There's some things that's becoming new. Amen? There's some things that's becoming new in us, and I believe that things are moving and shifting. If you believe that, say amen. 
I believe that there is a people who is hungry for revival. I believe there's a people who is still thirsty for a moving of the Holy Ghost and an outpouring of his presence that has been spoken, that has been released, and God is the living water, and he desperately wants to get that life to you. He desperately wants to see you walk in your miracle. Is there anybody still wanting to see miracles? Because I hear Jesus saying, come to me. Even those who have been burnt out by church, he's saying, come to me. Not the church, but come to me. Burn out by religion. Don't question what God is doing. It's a new thing. Come on, somebody say, it's a new thing. It's a new wine. It's a new thing. That means it always are gone. God is about to do something new in the middle of whatever you're in right now. God is about to make a way in the middle of, of no way and it's going to be like you didn't see it coming. He's about to do something brand new on the inside of you. I need somebody to understand that it's not going to look like it's always looked, that it's not going to operate like it's always operated. It's the same vision but the picture's about to be different. I need somebody to understand that you might have come in this place sick, but you're going to walk out of this place healed because there is a power in this place because he is my Sabbath. Somebody say he's about to do a new thing. And the Bible says that instantly the Lord healed this man. He rolled up his mat and he began to walk. And all of this happened on the Sabbath when the Jews began to ask, who did this? Where He was healed on the Sabbath? It's not lawful for you to carry your bed on the Sabbath day. See, religious folk get agitated when you do things you're not qualified to do. God can make things happen when they are not supposed to happen. Come on, slap somebody high five and tell them it's gonna happen. Now tell somebody else around you that looks excited that it is about to happen. Now I want you to look at somebody with a long face and say it's happening right here and right now. God is releasing a new thing. Old things have passed away. I'm not scorching through yesterday's revivals because I know God is about to show up and show out right here, right now because I got some five toes and some hands to lift to heaven and enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Somebody who's expected for a miracle, give him your best shout of praise. Yes. If you know he's pouring it out, say yes, Lord. He is pouring out a new thing. Something is happening. Thump, something is shifting in the atmosphere. And when the doctors say no, God is about to say yes. When your money's looking funny, God said, I'm your provider. All I got to do is sell some cows. I'll be right back. Come on, somebody. When cancer is in your body trying to take your, out, your life out, your family out, you need to understand the power that is on the inside of you. Even when it's hard to see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, the days I don't feel anything. I don't feel you, Lord, but I know you're with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for I know my God is with me. Thy rod, his Holy Spirit, his staff is comforting me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I'm not worried about my back. I got goodness. I got mercy protecting me. Come on, somebody. You need to quit worrying about everybody else and what they think, and you need to walk through that valley knowing that your God is able. He's about to pull you out and pull you up. Somebody needs to understand that the valley you're in is not where you're staying. I'm climbing up on the rough side. 
it may be a little rough but you're gonna make it you may be a little bloody there may be some scrapes on your knees but you're, I need somebody who understands that he is with you that he'll never leave you that he's never forsaken you even now in the middle somebody give God praise because there's a mountaintop experience Somebody touch your neighbor and say, he's working, he's working. You don't feel it, but he's working. It's dark, but he's working. You know what I've understood, ladies and gentlemen, that when I'm dry, when it's the darkest, my God is working the most. He does his best work in the night shift. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to understand that you've been weeping in the night. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Somebody who needs some strength better give God praise for some joy that's about to hit your house about three of you you don't want joy I'll take yours hallelujah release it God give me the joy that is my strength yea though I walk through the valley yea though I walk through demons and devils I will fear no evil I am a victor not the victim somebody needs to break victimization off of your life off of your family off of your marriage and give God a praise because joy unspeakable is about to hit your house. Somebody say yes, Lord. Somebody tell this preacher, settle down. Yes. Hallelujah. You know what, somebody just take 30 seconds, not because I told you to, but just give God praise for a moment. Come on, take 30 seconds and give God praise for what you've been hoping for. Give God praise for what you've been praying for. Give God praise because he's already done it. Come on, give God praise right now like it's already done. I said if it was already done, how would you praise him? If it was already in the account, how would you praise him? If your healing was already present and you were walking when they said you couldn't walk, how would you praise him? If you could see when you was blind, and he opened up your eyes how would you praise him if you come out of that wheelchair how would you somebody give God a praise like you've lost your mind and gained the mind of Christ I don't know about you, but I feel this now. Not tomorrow. I feel something now. I feel something new. I feel a shift in your situation. I don't know who I'm talking to, but right now, somebody say now. Things are shifting now. The ears will open now. Faith, your faith is creating your miracle now. Sickness is being healed now. Addictions are being broken now. Generational curses are under your feet now. Somebody pick up some rhythms of righteousness and start walking because the devil is under your feet now. Glory. Touch your neighbor and tell them, open your ears. And tell them, if you can't feel God, something's wrong with your feeler. And you need to work on that. Come on, somebody. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, he's in the house. This man who was paralyzed 38 years missed the moment. How many times have we missed the move of God. I didn't say the move wasn't here, and that may not have been here for you. Because your mind was on other things. Oh, Jesus. But He's moving. He's always moving. The Holy Spirit's always moving. 
It's our water that gets stagnant. It's our water that gets complacent. But somebody needs to take a finger of the Holy Ghost and begin to stir up the spirit on the, I didn't say stir up everybody else's junk. I said stir up the Holy Ghost on the inside of you trying to work it out. You'll never work it out. But I tell you what, you give it to the Holy Ghost, he will work all things together for good. Stirred up, getting ready to go. The pool of Bethesda is where the sick were, the paralyzed were, the lame were there, the broken people, the sick people. And occasionally an angel would be dispatched and move the waters and the gift of healing would come. Just like it did the other night before service even started, a gift of healing came and people started moving to the altars. On a Friday night as Pastor Amanda began to, before she even got into her sermon, let me tell you something, that's the way it's going to work is when we obey Him. Is when we listen to the Holy Spirit. So many times we have closed the door on the Spirit. We have frustrated the Spirit because we want it to go exactly the way we want it to go. And if I don't get my time, then He ain't going to have my time. Maybe I should stay there just for a minute. Because here's the truth of the matter. It's Him. It's what He wants to do. Gone are the days of our agenda. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Because gone are the days of what we want to do. Our ideas, good ideas. It's God idea time. It's God plan time. It's his purpose. I need somebody to shout right now. Or I'll just drive a stake and stay right here. I know I'm hitting something. I know I'm hitting some devils right now. I'm tired of good ideas. I'm ready for kingdom ideas. I don't care what this culture's doing. I'm ready for the kingdom to be built. I'm not dictated by what this world has done. It Separate yourself from a moment them we got to look different ladies and gentlemen this man who was paralyzed missed it because he said uh, verse 7 explicitly de declares why he says I don't have anybody to help me how many times have you allowed somebody else to receive their miracle and miss yours? You know, I feel like I'd at least tried to pull myself over there. Y'all have heard me say that before. Just pull myself over there and just stick a finger in, you know, and just wait for the moving. But he missed it. Tell your neighbor you can be so close, but still far away. God has given the gift of healing this morning. God has given you a gift of deliverance. He's given you a gift of peace. He's given you the gift of joy. But the problem is dependency. God has given us the gift, but we're, we're waiting on somebody else. We're depending on somebody else to get us into the pool. Somebody else to get us into worship. Yeah, this is good, ain't it? Hallelujah. Somebody else to help me get my breakthrough. Somebody else to get me into my healing. Somebody else. And the reason why so many people miss their turn is because they have a problem with dependency and you're waiting on somebody else to get you in. And God said, I'm waiting on you to get in. I say that again. God's saying, I'm waiting on you to enter my gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. It's time to stop allowing somebody else to push and pry you. There ought to be enough God in you to get in without somebody trying to shove you in. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Stop allowing you know, it's just a dependency deficiency. That's all it is. Stop depending on others. 
to make you happy. To complete you. Stop depending on your husband to complete you. Your wife cannot... Ah. Shout out to the Come back in, Holy Ghost. You say, well, you complete me, and she does. But without Jesus in the middle, there is no completion. Without Jesus in the middle, I'll never be whole. I'll never be fixed. I'll be a mess, and I'll make a mess. But when Jesus is the center of it all, that's it. When you put Jesus at the top of your triangle and you're going up together to meet Jesus, you get closer together. That's what unity is all about. That's why worship is so important because when we make the main thing the main thing, division has to fall. Fear has to fall. Sickness has to fall. I need somebody to understand the spirit of unity in this place and give God a corporate expression of your worship. I need you to unashamedly to lift your voice, stand on your feet, give your key a Standing ovation right now. Come on, come on. Shout, 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 shout. Come on, somebody shout like you lost your mind. Woo! I hear breakthrough. <laughs> I hear the healing power of God. I hear deliverance. I hear a new sound in this house. Old things are passing away. There's a new flow that's about to go. I need somebody to understand that you need to stop depending on the media to train your kids, the culture to train your kids. It's time for you to let God be God in your house. I need somebody right now to tell the devil to go back to hell where he belongs. The culture is not going to tell me what's right and wrong. It's this book and this book alone. Somebody say kingdom and give God a praise for his word. Somebody say take it up. Take it up. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere, I promise. We're going to land this plane here in just a minute. Stop depending on others. Stop depending on the culture to tell you right from wrong. Stop, stop depending on Facebook to tell you how liked you are. See, we're worried about the likes of many, but I'm only worried tonight. I can't say that I've always been this way. I'm going to be real with you. But I don't care about the likes of many. If I'm standing by myself, I want to only be loved by one. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You only need him. You only need, I said you only need him to complete the mission. But we got to be unified, ladies and gentlemen. We got to connect together. And the only thing that can bring our differences together is the name that's above every name. Somebody shout. Jesus and shout unto him right now with the voice of victory. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's shifting now. Come on. Turn your neighbor and say it's about to shift. From this, say from this moment forward, my faith, my family, my finances. My future are in the hands of the one who said in John 10, 28, and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my head. Come on, somebody. No weapon. 
I didn't say they weren't formed. They are formed and they're formed greater than ever. But no weapon can take you from the hand of the master. I need somebody to understand you're protected under a nail scarred hand. He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. Somebody shall no weapon. And so I will trust in the God of John 10, 28 and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. They shall, they sh the, the, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. This morning I declare over you, you're in the hands of the master. I declare Psalm 62, 5 over you and that your soul will wait Sometimes silently for the God alone. I said him alone. For your expectation is from him. Come on somebody. You're expected because you know he's about to renew you. He's, he's about to restore you. They that wait is about to run. Somebody's about to do something they told you you'd never do. You're about to grow wings on your back. You're about to soar above everything that's tried to knock you down. Somebody give God praise because you're about to run and you're about to fly in this season that you're walking. Come on, I need you to agree with me right now. You're about to be a soar in the kingdom of God. You're about to be a runner in a marathon. God will not allow you to be stopped. God will not allow it to be hindered. I, I know there's stop signs, but there's a marathon. I know there's stop signs, but on the third day, he arose. They tried to stop him. They tried to hold him. They tried to contain him, but they couldn't contain life. Can I tell you what's on the inside of you? Somebody shout life and give God a shout of praise for the life, resurrection power that's on the inside of you. Now somebody stir it up and say hallelujah. Somebody tell him, he's done, I promise, he's close. He's close, he's close, he's close. Don't worry. That when others are trusting in everything of this world, as the Bible says, some trust in chariots, but I'll depend upon him, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'll trust in the God of Ephesians 3.20, that he can do exceeding abundantly above anything I could ever think, ask, or imagine. I'll praise him because I'm not dependent on this world system to survive, but God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Did you hear that, devil? Somebody say to your neighbor, it's time to ignite the flame. It's time to destroy the works of the devil. It's time to crunch every generational curse under your feet. Come on, you need to hear the crunch to know that it's done. That's what I'm talking Every bone's about to be crushed. Every generational curse that almost took you out, it's destroyed in the name of G. I need somebody right now to rebuke that divorce off of your family, to rebuke that addiction off of your children. Come on, somebody, to rebuke that fear off of your daughter, to rebuke that anxiety off of your son. They will do what God has called them to do. Somebody give God praise for your family because it's breaking up. Some of you here are lame today. I'm just trying to wake y'all up, that's all. Some of you are paralyzed. Some of you lack mobility. You know why? Because fear will immobilize you. Some are blind in our faith. Some are sick in our integrity because somebody has cut on our character. Maybe you're paralyzed by sin, what you did. Your past, can't get away from it. Stuck. It's tied you up. Your past is wrapped around you. And you're shamed. And religion is condemning you. I want to point this out. 
Somebody point your finger like this. Let's all point it out. When you're pointing at somebody else, look at the three pointing back at you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because when you're pointing at somebody else, you better watch out. When you're pointing at somebody's adultery, you better watch out. Because it'll come at you three times greater. Hallelujah. Can I get a good hallelujah right there? It's true. It's true. You know who's the accuser of the brethren, Tim? Satan. I just want you to marinate on that for a minute. And here's why I want you to understand this. Because if we're going to operate in unity, we got to cut off the gossip. I'm glad three of you and four of you agree with me in here. I know, I, you know, it hits nerves and it hurts, but can I tell you the truth will cut you and you might bleed on the way out, but his blood will set you free. Man, I heard Parsley say this the other day, and, and Lord, he is on fire right now. I'm telling you, go listen to some of his stuff, and it, it does hurt. I'm just going to be honest. He steps on my toes. Thank God for my grace, number five down there, you know. But he said, what we need to do is quit making it so easy for people to get into the doors. He said, we need to put a barbed wire fence around the property. And he, he said, those who are desperate will climb that fence and they may come in bloody, but those who are desperate will get in and get what they need. Come on, somebody. Churches are trying to make it easy. Church, let's be relevant. Let's turn the lights down low. Let's do it this way. Let's, let's put some little tables outside so we can be friendly. Stand about this far away from them so you can greet them. And we've even got our steps measured out of how we greet people. What is wrong with us? Don't shout me down while I'm preaching good. It's true. But how desperate would you be to get in this house? And I'm glad you're here. I'm not saying that I'm not glad you're here. And I'm glad this place is full tonight, today. Sorry, it's, I've been preaching a few times. But I'm glad you're here. God is glad you're here. You've pressed through life to get here. Some of you pressed through some arguments on the way over here to get here. You know, it's at intense moments of fellowship. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you's almost paralyzed coming in here because <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Get out of my mind, devil. You know, I'm, I'm just kidding. Don't y'all think that's the way we are because we're not that way. We really aren't. We very, very rarely argue. We used to be that way. But why fight? Why argue? I can be different than you. We don't agree on everything. But we can agree on one thing. So let's focus on that. Right? I may not agree on how everybody should be dunk covered and smothered. But I can agree that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I can agree that through Him, healing and deliverance and signs and wonders and miracles and demonstrations only come through Him. How many agree with that? Let me see your hand. See what I'm talking about? We all know that. So let's focus on that. Turn your neighbor and tell them, say, focus on that. Maybe it's self-pity you're paralyzed by. Maybe it's you're frozen in that victim mentality. Maybe you're stricken by poverty and it's been a generational curse. There's healing for you. 
Maybe it's unforgiveness, unbelief. Maybe it's the opinion of what others think about you. We've all been there. But there's healing in the house. Lay your hand on your neighbor right now and say, there's healing for you. Say, there's healing in the house. There's a stirring of the waters. And you don't have to be defined by the likes of man, but you are defined by the love of the Father who is perfect in all of his ways. Come on, somebody say, your answer is Jesus. Come on, say, I need you and you need me. And we need Jesus. We need to be a born again, blood washed, devil rebuking, Bible believing, water walking, mountain moving, Christian. If you believe that, stand up on your feet and give God a corporate expression of your praise because that's what we're about to walk into. Come on, somebody. I need a unified, the best praise you've given him all morning. Hallelujah. You can remain standing. I, I got to finish. I got more word. <coughs> If you've ever missed the opportunity of your miracle, raise your hand. Let me just see. The rest of you liars can get your hands up. I say that in all the grace of the Lord and Savior and the mercy of God. Those who have been waiting and praying and fasting, here's what I want to tell you. Today is your turn. It's your turn, lady. Whoever's seen hallelujah, you can go ahead and come up to this altar because it's for you. It's your turn. I said it's your turn for your miracle. Come on. Somebody celebrate a miracle that's getting ready to take place right now. There's a breakthrough in the house. There's a, I said it's your turn. You've missed it before, but you're not missing it this morning. If you need a breakthrough, if you need a miracle, if you need addictions broken off of your life, I come to tell somebody it's your turn. It's your turn. God give you another chance. God will make a way in the middle of no way. You thought, I never will get that chance again. I'll never be able to be healed. I'll never be able. My sons and daughters will never come in, but I come to tell you it's your turn. Now, I need some saints to celebrate what's about to take place in this house it's your turn it's your turn it's your turn it's your turn come on come on touch somebody around you right now and say it you're next you're next you're next it's your turn and something is about to happen there's a shift in the atmosphere there's a greater dimension that has never been released before there's a destiny in front of you come on Jesus asked the man would you like to get well and his response was I can't I come to tell you you're right you can't do it but he can in your can't he will come on somebody when you do what you can he will do what you can't and Jesus said do you want to be made well do you want to be answered do you want him to respond as you release uh, your authority and your power and your will unto him he's about to release his power into you he's about to release his healing into you I need some intercessors right now to start praying this is the response of so many that we can't but Jesus knows that you can and if you could he wouldn't be asking you right now Jesus is saying to to you this morning he is saying I can hallelujah he, he is saying I can there's some angels right now stirring up the waters something different is about to happen I said something different is about to happen it's not going to happen the way that we saw it coming because you don't have to walk to him I believe that as you've demonstrated your faith God is about to walk to you I said the water is about to cover you the water is about to bring life to some bodies right now the water is about to bring life to some minds if you believe it I need the saints of God to say hallelujah yes Jesus I'm going to get down there I'm going to pray for you but I want to I want to release just a few more things it was faith and obedience to the word that changed everything look what's just happened this morning you've moved on the word and when you moved, every devil moved out of your way. <laughs> no more paralyzation. Lift your hands toward heaven. I'm going to get down there, but I want you to say this. No more paralyzation. 
in my mind. Say anxiety, worry, fear, it's over. Say confusion, it's over. Say I'm taking my ideas back. I'm taking my God developments back in my mind. Hallelujah. I declare every demonic hindrance over your destiny is breaking this morning. Right here and right now, God is doing a new thing in a new way. If you want it new, somebody praise Him like you want it. Somebody praise Him like you want it more than you want food. Somebody praise Him like you want it more than you want to breathe your own natural air. Somebody praise it like you know your healing has already taken place. Somebody praise Him like fear has just left your house. Pray in the Holy Ghost, saints. Pray in the Holy Ghost. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. I just want you to get one more picture. One more picture. Mark 16 and 18 says this, and some of you probably could quote it by heart. They will take up serpents. Come on. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick. I said they will lay hands on the sick. You're about to discover that he's about to recover. Somebody lay your hand on your neighbor up in these altars right now. You will lay hands on the sick. Come on, come on. You got to do it. You got to move. They will take up serpents. Now, here's what I want to say. If the man, Brother Mike, would have not taken up the mat and rolled it up and took control, he would have had the temptation to go back to it. They will take up serpents. Here's what I hear the Lord saying. It's time for you to take up that addiction that's trying to take you out. You say, why take it up? So you can take control over the things that's been controlling you. That serpent's trying to wrap around your legs, ladies and gentlemen. That serpent is trying to wrap you up and tie you up and it's trying to choke the life out of you and it's trying to take the pneuma out of you, the breath of God out of you. It's time for you to take up the thing that wants to entangle you, that wants to distract you, that wants to take you out. It's time for you to take it up, take up the things that's about to take you out and I want you to do this in the spirit. Take up that serpent and rip the head off of that thing and say no more. This has been Take It Up by Pastor Aaron Crabb. We hope you've enjoyed this word. If you would like to hear more messages like this one, please take a second and click the subscribe button and visit us at rhctn.com.